In Formula One, the spotlight often falls on two cars and two drivers. But behind them is a hidden network, a hive of communication that stretches across the world. And this all happens here in Milton Keynes, inside Oracle Red Bull Racing's race operations room. This is where engineers, strategists and analysts work closely together with their counterparts across the world. Today, we're going to take you inside our race operations room to see how the teams stay connected with their trackside counterparts. So this is our ops room. Everyone here has a specific but vitally important role to play in the outcome of our race weekend. What role does this room play on a Sunday? So this is a, a really critical part of the sort of race weekend function, basically. In here, we've got just over 40 old people and they're providing an awful lot of data and analysis to the team at the track, um, helping them make the right decisions and sort of basically get the best that we can out of the race weekend. Hand and wheels track, right? Go ahead. So when we're on the pit wall, uh, the idea is that really we should just be looking at the big picture and making the decisions. The ops room is where all the more detailed work is going on. Obviously, we're just sitting on that pit wall. We don't know when incidents happen, they have eyes everywhere, so they can really keep us informed on everything going on so that we can sit there, look at the race as a whole and make those correct decisions. Emily from Anna on Strike Room. If we've got any footage of the track or how it's drying, that would be helpful. Making sure that what you're getting across to them is precise, but also as short as possible is important. They did just interview Toto on Sky and he thinks it's going to be slicks. Okay, that is helpful, thank you. But like in this environment, everything is pretty instant. You either see the good or bad. You don't have time to really think back and go, well, I could have done this, I could have done that. So we have instant communication to the track with this intercom panel. That's got a live link. Everyone's wearing headsets at the track. We have multiple channels, so depending on the relevant audience, we'll jump on the correct channel. The communication is instant from here, as if they were sat next to me. Hannah, Nish on Strike Row. Go ahead, Nish. I think Leclerc will clear the safety car window of Sonoda this lap. Running some simulations to figure out if it's a one or a two stop. Looking at the pit loss, trying to figure out where the car's strong, where the car's weak. So we look after the car um, health and reliability of multiple systems like the braking system, the engine, the gearbox, and the cooling config of the car. During the Friday, Saturday, and we look at the temperature evolution throughout the weekend, and we try to fit the bodywork that will give us the best cooling for the Sunday based on the pre-event sweeps that have been provided to us. So we have live onboards of all the cars, uh, live radio of all 20 drivers. So we have lots of people listening to each of those streams and then relaying on relevant comments. Norris saying he's a lot quicker. Russell's engineer is saying that his rear tyres are just about starting to overheat. We have a huge amount of data available to us. It's trying to analyse that data and work out actually what are the key things that the data can tell us. And then using that data with our models to then predict how things are going to perform in the future. For so many years, I was on the other end of this data stream in the garage, focusing on what I had to do when the pit stop call came. So that call is coming any minute now. Now the first call they will get will be pit stop imminent. And then when you see them react is when they've had the 15 second call. And that's when they'll file out into the pit lane and get ready for that stop. So we've just done Max's first pit stop. Um, what are the things that you're sort of looking at post pit stop? Yeah, if we see any issues with the brakes or with the engine, yeah. we would immediately feedback. And then the race engine if you with the driver any instructions. Exactly, so if they have to change engine modes or if they have to lift off more. Yeah, incredible, amazing. Thank yeah. you for your time. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Yeah. In a, in a funny way, winning a race, don't get me wrong, it's always fantastic. Yeah but it's much sweeter when you feel like it's, you've made the difference. So maybe a race that you shouldn't have won, and maybe you take a bit of a risk on a strategy and, and it pays off. Yeah. And you think, yes, I, I really made a difference. I contributed to that. I and that. I think that that is always the sweetest moment. It's a different environment every single race. I think that excitement and diversity in what I'm doing. The fact that you can be sat thousands of miles away from the track itself, but seeing that you have had an effect on the session, the outcome, that feeling, that's, that's definitely what keeps me coming back, loving it. The ops room might just look like a load of screens, but inside, it's a team working with absolute precision, every lap, every second, to guide the car home. 
And that's what it takes, a global team connected by communication and driving performance wherever Formula One takes us.